I was dreaming again. The dream. The one with Jason. An array of colorful lights lit the room, and the spiced scents of cinnamon and clove permeated my senses. For one brief moment, I was home. Then I heard running in the distance. A disruption. I felt the wind of the basketball as it flew past my face. Heard the loud crash as it struck down the nearby canvas. My masterpiece. Damn it, Jason! I spat. How many times have I told you not to play with that ball in the house? I'm sorry, Dad. The boy was petrified, but I didn't care. I don't want to hear it. I'm done with you. Go to your goddamn room, now! I came to regret those words. Far too late. The wetness streamed down the boy's flushed cheeks. He scurried away then, and slammed the bedroom door behind him. Good riddance, I thought. I went over to assess the damage. Not as bad as I'd feared. And so, despite Jason's distant sobs, I returned to my work. Amidst the last embers of the dying fire, I listened, knowing it would not take long for Jason's cries to fade away. And then, blissful silence. I awoke with a start, inhaled the pungent odor of rot, and felt the cold sting of rough concrete on my bare back. Oh, my head hurt. What happened? I looked down and gasped. I was naked, tied up and left to rot on the floor of some dank cell. I wished I were dreaming, but my pounding skull told me otherwise. Despite a sudden wave of nausea, I weakly sat up. The room spun as though I had just emerged from heavy anesthesia. Where the hell was I? And more importantly, how was I going to get out? After a moment, I cautiously rose to my feet to better examine my surroundings. I was trapped inside a cramped, dimly lit prison cell. Spider webs littered the ceiling, and thick layers of dirt and grime told me that the place hadn't been occupied in some time. My movements must have garnered some attention, because a feminine voice suddenly spoke from behind the right cell wall. Hey, you, you awake? Oh, please be awake. Yeah. <coughs> I'm awake. My hands are tied, though. Where are you? I, I can't see you. I'm locked in the cell next to you. You'll need to find something sharp to cut the rope so you can free your hands. There must be something nearby that you can use. See if you can cut yourself free.
small index card sat upon the cell's table. Something was written on it. I should find a way to free my arms first. A green lantern shone brightly and provided the only visible light in the cell. The rusted sink was dry, as though it hadn't been turned on in years. The faucet knob turned, but no water emerged. Still flushes. That's a relief. A full roll of toilet paper sat on the wobbly shelf. I thoroughly searched the bed. Not easy given that my wrists were tied. On the floor underneath the bed's frame was a dirty penny, dated 1922. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't even bother with it. But given my present condition, I picked up the old penny with my clenched knuckles. That was the idea. Now if only I could figure out how to do it. I tried to unscrew the grid cover by hand, but the screws were too tight. I tried to... With the penny, I loosened and removed three of the great cover's four screws. The cover fell open. Behind it were a set of metal bars, one of which was broken with a sharp edge. I dropped to my knees and positioned the rope binding my hands so that it pressed upon the sharp edge of the broken metal bar. I then began to shift my arms back and forth vigorously so that the rope rubbed against the jagged edge. The rope snapped within seconds, and my arms were freed. Okay, I'm free. Good. Now, see if there's a key somewhere nearby. I found a key in my cell, but it won't open my cell door. Maybe you'll have better luck. I tried to open the cell door, but as expected, it was firmly locked. Oh, uh, is there a note inside your cell? Yep, you too? It says to meet some new friends in the cafeteria. Mine too. Too bad we can't get out of here, huh? I found a small key. Try it on the cell door. Uh, it's not working. It must not be the right key. I was afraid of that. My name's Jessica, by the way. Jessica Bartlett. But all my friends call me Jessie, so you can too. 